Hello, good evening. And this evening I'm going to do a tribute to Danny Lane. Uh, James Griffith suggested I should do this and because I've got a few of his solo records. I think he was a stellar member of Wings and uh, quite an undervalued member of that band. And uh, just want to talk about him for a bit. This is the first album that <coughs> he was on. He was originally with the Moody Blues and then Paul got friendly with him and the rest of the Beatles and asked him to join Wings and uh, he didn't start off writing songs for Wings but on this album which would have been a double which ended up being a single he had a glorious song called I Would Only Smile which uh, really should have made the album I think or maybe it should have been a double so uh, the jury's out on that but uh, I'm quite happy to entertain that as being a double <coughs> uh, Red Rose Speedway no, no Denny songs on the finished album. <clears throat> this band on the run thing I'm showing you is a Canadian pressing. And the reason I'm showing you is because the Canadian pressing is different and the US pressing as well for having Denny pictured in the middle versus Linda. Uh, so that's interesting. And then also this Indian pressing is interesting because it's on the, the Apple label which is uh, not usual normally uh, in, in England and in the US it was on that the, the band on the run label with the three pictures of Paul, Linda and Danny but that's interesting um, and then I think his he came to fruition in his time with Wings he sang a bit of Spirit, um, Spirits of Ancient Egypt but he didn't write that song uh, so his first number well he co-wrote No Words from Band on the Run, which was a pretty decent song, um, although he's not singing lead on it, or he's singing joint lead. Um, but I think Speed of Sound was his, where he came into his own, because the songs, well, Paul wrote one song from The Note You Never Wrote, which he sings great. And then Time to Hide was a highlight, not only of that album, but uh, one of the highlights of the, of the tour. Um, and then I think Probably the peak of Danny's career was uh, on this album where he co-wrote five tracks. Um, let me see if I can remember. London Town, um, Deliver Your Children, More Smooth and the Grey Goose, Don't Let It Bring You Down, that's four, um, and Children, Children. So really nice, folky, contribution to this underrated album I know it's not everyone's favorite but anyway but in terms of solo well he'd had a hit with the electric string band um, with a song called I would only smile no no with a song called um, say you don't mind and uh, I met when I met Denny in 1987 I presented him with all these solo albums and he was quite amused that I had them where did you find this Denny Lane, he wrote. Um, Japanese Tears came out after Wings, after the Tokyo bust up, and probably his strongest album. There's some great tracks on here, including a couple of lost Wings tracks like Weep for Love, um, Send Me the Heart, and I Would Only Smile, which turned up, turned up on the Red Rose Speedway archive release. Um, and Japanese Tears is a rather mischievous song about the Japanese fans being let down by the drug bust and Paul apparently wasn't too pleased with uh, with Denny's view on the subject. So this is an interesting uh, inner sleeve and uh, he was also responsible for introducing Lawrence Juba and Steve Holly to Wings for the final album they did together, Back to the Egg. Uh, with again and again and again being quite possibly one of the strongest tracks on the album and that's not a detriment to the Paul songs on the album there's some good Paul stuff as well but Denny really came up trumps on that one this is a kind of remix version of uh, Japanese Tears Hi Again John, Denny Lane he signed and then he got, a, got into a series of solo albums in the 80s which weren't so good. But this is quite interesting. Uh, 
Well, Jay, you must be serious, he's written on the back here. Yeah. It's a pretty dreadful cover, but uh, <clears throat> there's some quite good songs like Stay, Stay Away, um, Hometown Girls, the title track is okay. But what a cover, that's pretty embarrassing. Um, then he went to Spain and recorded this album of instrumental guitar music, which was quite nice. Um, Around about that time, of unfortunately, he fell in with some journalists and wrote some articles in The Sun, which appeared in The Sun, where he was slagging off Paul. And uh, basically, Paul and Denny hardly spoke after that. Uh, there's, a, there's a good picture of them backstage together at, uh, I think it was um, a reggae concert, uh, 2008 kind of time. I think it was UB40. Uh, they're both into reggae, but uh, un unfortunately Paul and Denny haven't really rekindled their friendship and it would be great if they did. I know probably not going to happen after all these years, but I feel that Paul and Denny spent 10 years together in the 70s and uh, it would be great if they could just bury the past and uh, come back and do a, a duet concert. Maybe Denny's voice is not up to it anymore. I don't know. This uh, Wings on My Feet album from 1987. Actually, I saw him first in Wimbledon Theatre, January of 87, just after he'd declared himself bankrupt. He'd um, got into financial difficulties, and Paul had bought his share of Mullah of Kintyre, which they co-wrote for a sum of money. And uh, it was a bit sad because in Wimbledon Theatre there was maybe... Uh, 10-15% of the capacity attending the gig, not very many, maybe 50 people or something. And we all retired to the pub afterwards and had good chats. And throughout 87 I followed him around the London pub circuit, he was doing gigs. And uh, it was great. And I kept on saying, um, London Town and Back to the Egg are my favourite Wings albums. And he kept on saying, oh, Band of the Run is mine. Uh, so there. Um, then this album, Danny, Danny Lane, Lonely Road, is kind of not bad. It had a, a song called Land of Peace, which was released as a single in 87, but not, um, not released on an album till 88. This is 88. It's a pr pretty boring cover again. But uh, Danny Lane, I think, you know, his contribution, he wasn't... Uh, successful a collaborator with McCartney as Lennon for sure and probably not as successful as Elvis Costello but some of the tracks they co-wrote together particularly on London Town I think are uh, decent and uh, he really uh, stuck with Paul through thick and thin when other, when other band members are leaving and I'm grateful to him for that and I just wish Paul would uh, give them a bit more credit in interviews or would make up with them because uh, it's you know, and uh, actually after John died, they did, uh, on the day John died, they went into the studio and they were recording Rain Clouds and, uh, and he was invited to Montserrat to, re to record Tug of War sessions with McCartney, but uh, Paul didn't want to tour after John's death, so Denny packed his bags and left, or was asked to leave, a combination of the two maybe. But uh, it's a bit of a sad ending, because I think his tenure with Wings is, is as I say, valuable. And uh, he always got on well with, uh, with Linda and uh, with, with the band. And as I say, he, he introduced um, Steve Holly and Lawrence Juba to Paul. And they, so we, have, we can be grateful t to him for that, because Back to the Egg was probably one of the strongest lineups. Um, he had rows with Jimmy McCulloch, apparently he had rows with Henry McCulloch. When I met Henry McCulloch at a gig in London, um, he was less than complimentary about Denny Lane when I asked him. He uh, said he was uh, a rat or something similar. And uh, when I asked him about Paul, he just he said he's the nicest bloke you could ever meet. So that was interesting. So he didn't always get on with everyone, but... Uh, you yeah, know, those 10 years, that, that body of work stands up, stands the test of time, and Denny was quite a big part of it in terms of uh, the guitar. I mean, Band on the Run was just the three of them. Uh, down in Lagos in Nigeria and London Town, they were reduced to a trio. And uh, 
Danny's work is uh, is pretty pretty impressive, and I got a lo lot of time for the guy. So thanks for watching. See you next time.